What's going on YouTube? This is Necrostevo and it's time for our pre-battle team builder for the Pokemon Premier League week two against the Norwich Skitty coached by Don Fanatic. Uh, this is the first time I'm getting a chance to record and this is also before our match obviously uh, we're supposed to battle at midnight or actually 1 a.m. tonight so while I am quite tired and quite beat we are excited we are pumped up ready for this matchup uh, this has been a long time coming for this battle actually uh, and of course you all if you're not familiar with the Don Fanatic I will leave his links in the description but fantastic battler very well known for bringing kind of creative sets and um, just things that you wouldn't normally expect. So our work is definitely cut out for us as usual. Now, for this battle in particular, I thought being a little bit more creative with the sets, uh, I did go and get a little bit of practice with Mega Blast Toys too, but being a little bit more creative with my sets is going to be what serves me overall better in the Pokemon Premier League this season. So for this matchup, I have a Choice Scarf Adamant Primeape uh, he has actually just enough speed to edge out, uh, mainly if he doesn't bring Scarf uh, Heliolisk or if he doesn't bring Scarf Noivern. Um, I have enough speed on this primate to edge out regular Noivern, max speed Noivern. And then um, I also have a lot of extra HP EVs to help me take a little bit of this priority he has going on between Metagross, Crawdon, Donphan, and Gallade. He has a lot of priority options. And I don't want to put myself in the position where I'm easily picked off by those options. Uh, primate speed is so nice and high that I can put the rest of my extra EVs into HP and take those hits a little bit better while very comfortably basically 2 it KOing his entire team barring Skarmory. Um, the main thing with Primate though is going to be to check to see who his Scarf Pokemon is because he could Scarf Arcanine, Helios, or Noivern. To a lesser extent, Metagross, I don't see him doing that, but I do think he might bring Scarf, Heliolisk, or Noivern. And if he doesn't bring any of them Scarf, then Primate basically runs Revenge, Kill, Train on his whole team. Uh, I did go with Close Combat, Gunk Shot, Ice Punch just for solid neutral coverage. Really don't like the chance of missing Gunk Shot, but it does hit everything besides the Scar Mori. And the Ice Punch is just there for um, Dawn Fan and Noivern. So I don't get unnecessary uh, attack drops if I don't need to. What is nice is that his only real hazard removal is Defog if he wants to do that. Um, and then of course he has a chance to bring Intimidate with Arcanine. So if I get a chance to force him into those options, I can take advantage of them with Primate's Defiant ability. My second Pokemon is going to be Magneton. I was so happy to get this bread in time. I ended up going with Hidden Power Ground Magneton with a modest nature and just enough speed on Magneton to outspeed max speed of um, if he decides to go with a lot of speed on something like uh, Crawdont, I can outspeed that. If he decides to go with uh, the more standard type Metagross, a little bit bulkier, I can outspeed that. And of course, I want to make sure I can outspeed any type of invested Dawn fan as well, because I don't want to take an Earthquake with my Magneton. Uh, Magnet Rise is just there, because there's a chance that Donfin will come, and of course, Pokemon like Metagross like to run Earthquake as coverage as well. So uh, I don't think I'll see Donfin in this match. I do think I'll seeing. I do think I, we will be seeing Metagross or um, Skarmory. So the ability to trap them and do extra damage is fantastic. Hidden Power Ground though is just there for Heliolisk. Otherwise, my stab options do more damage. But otherwise, if I don't have Hidden Power Ground, Heliolisk is a great switch into Magneton, so I want to kind of deny him of that option. Uh, of course, going bulkier with the Eviolite instead of trying to go for any type of Scarf or Spec shenanigans here. I do want to be able to switch up my moves, that way if I trap something in, I'm not stuck using Thunderbolt and then he can bring in Don Fan, or stuck using Flash Cannon and then he can bring in his Heliolisk or the Metagross with a Crawdon and set up. Now on the next Pokemon here, we do have Blastoise. Blastoise gets fantastic neutral coverage against his entire team. Uh, because of Mecha Launcher, I do get the pseudo stab going on. But what is really, really nice is that I can afford to run Scald or Syrian Dark Pulse. And you'll see that I've bumped up the HP all the way to max here. And then I also have 156 speed EVs. Those are just to outspeed Jolly, max speed Crawdont. 
and then I really didn't actually need that much special attack for this battle because of Blastoise's natural special attack. On top of Mega Launcher, that's going to be doing a lot of work. So I think Blastoise is going to be in a position where he's going to be taking a lot of resisted weaker hits in this battle if I set things up properly. With max HP, I can even take big hits like um, a Banded Crawdon knockoff or uh, I can even take a Heliolus Thunderbolt. I think I only have about a 15-18% chance of getting KO'd by a Life Orb Heliolus Thunderbolt. And um, Blastoise's role in this battle is going to be to open up weaknesses in uh, Jack's team. Every time I use Scald, he doesn't have a switch in for Scald besides Heliolisk. And if he has that, I'm going to use Aura Sphere because he can't risk switching in Heliolisk on a Scald if I have Aura Sphere. So, and of course, Dark Pulse is just nice neutral coverage as well. And I'm barely missing out on stuff like uh, one hit KO on the Metagross in exchange here. But I do think the ability to take a little bit more hits and uh, be able to threaten him around is going to be really, really useful. Um, him only having one switch into Scald is really, really nice for this battle. Uh, with my next Pokemon, this is the only thing that's a little bit subject to change here. Because I can't decide if I want to run Fire Blast or Dragon Claw or Stealth Rock here. I feel like I need to run Stealth Rock to force him into defogging. Um, but uh, I do know that this is all the speed that I need to outrun Max Speed Arcanine. Which is the only thing that I'm really worried about here. Because Heliolus and Noivern are going to outspeed me anyway. Uh, so that's basically the speed tier that I'm worried about. I do want to bring Garchomp because of, again, solid neutral coverage against his entire team. My Garchomp is really the only reason why I would see him bring Donphan, just to have Ice Shard as an option. And I have so many switch-ins to Donphan that I think it's worth risking that type of scenario. Uh, I also might forego Fire Blast on my Garchomp just because I feel like I had the Skarmory pretty well covered between Magneton and Blastoise. But, uh... I, I could see some weird shenanigans like Air Balloon Metagross coming or something like that. So, I don't know. This is the only thing that really might change before the battle. I was even looking at a more specially offensive Garchomp as well. But I know I'm bringing Garchomp. It's just a matter of what spread. Uh, the next Pokemon is going to be Weavile. Once again, we just have a Pokemon here that threatens his whole team. And he knows I'm bringing Weavile. Which is why I do expect for him to bring Metagross. Uh, just to have the bullet punch option that's also good against Gardevoir. But if he brings Metagross with bullet punch, that gives me options to switch back into Magneton, Blastoise, and Garchomp as well. So we do have just standard knockoff Icicle Crash and Ice Shard. I anticipate Aromatisse coming just to be able to switch into knockoff because I can kind of spam knockoff against his team. Mega Gallade, while it doesn't have an item to be removed, is not a good switch in because Life Orb knockoff from Weavile does probably around 30 to 40%. And then after that, I still outspeed him, and I resist his priority option on Mega Gallade. So, uh, and removing any item from Skarmory is great if he tries to bring Shed, uh, Shed Shell. It allows my Magneton to trap it. Um, I can remove the Aromatisse's leftovers. Donphan gets KO'd by an Icicle Crash after taking a knockoff, so I have a lot of great options there. Iron Tail is just for Aromatisse, because there's a chance that um, even on a max defensive Aromatisse, Knockoff combined with Iron Tail might be enough to KO. So uh, I want to force him into positions where he has to choose between, okay, do I want to sack a Pokemon or take another big hit? Because the more I do that, the more it makes things easier for Primate to clean up late game or for Blastoise to just continue to punch holes. Um, I had to go max speed here just because I don't want to try for extra damage with Adamant and then be outsped by, Helio uh, by Noivern, excuse me. Um, my last Pokemon is actually going to be a little bit different than what I, I, I admit that I just, I wasn't planning on bringing Gardevoir, but I'm so afraid of Noivern just being Specs or Scarf and just dropping Draco all over my team. That sounds weird. It's like dropping, I'm not going to say that. Never mind. Just using Draco Meteor on my team repeatedly, uh, that I am bringing Gardevoir to this match. Um, it is a little bit of a liability having that steel type weakness. So to shore that up a little bit, we have Babiri Berry. The 180 speed Tim in nature allows me to outspeed Metagross and either burn it or outright KO it if he's below 50% of his HP. 
Um, and Moonblast with this special attack investment will always want to hit KO Noivern because I don't expect Noivern to run any bulk or HP or anything. Um, so I had that option too. Uh, the special defense is just there to help me avoid the two hit KO coming from, uh, like if he has a Specs Noivern with Boom Burst or something weird like that, then I can avoid the two hit KO. Um, and it's also nice because with the Babiri Berry and that investment, I am not one hit KO'd by any type of Metagross attack, including Meteor Mash. So I can avoid that and really neuter it, which allows Garchomp to set up. Or if Metagross or um, Crawdon get burned, then Blastoise can come back in with Impunity. So that is really, really nice to have that option as well. Um, for now, I have Future Sight here. I Future Sight would really only see use if he doesn't have... Um, the Crawdont, which I anticipate him to bring the Crawdont, but Crawdont has, I, if he brought Crawdont, I'm thinking it would be banded. So if he's banded into like a, a dark type move, and then I can go out into like my Blastoise or something like that, Future Sight can force him back into the Crawdont when he doesn't really want to go into it, which is nice because I can kind of play around with those options. Future Sight is also really nice. I was considering Psy Shock to hit the Arcanine. But uh, I just feel like I'll be switching out of that situation so much because Ar Arcanine can kind of threaten um, the physical moves. And for the most part, Garchomp and Blastoise are safe switches into the Arcanine, barring Wild Charge or Hidden Power Ice, which I will have to scout for those to see if he has those. Because um, if he has Wild Charge or Hidden Power Ice, then Magneton kind of becomes a switch in to see if he's more offensive as well. Uh, so for this matchup, just to recap, we have Scarf Primeape, Adamant Nature, we have a nice bulky Magneton here with Eviolite with Hidden Power Ground. I can't wait to nickname that thing. And we have a very, very bulky, tanky Blastoise with enough speed to outspeed the Crawdon if necessary. Um, I haven't decided on the Garchomp. And uh, standard offensive Weavile with Iron Tail just to hit the Aromatis. And a nice, speedy, yet bulky Gardevoir to be a secondary check to Metagross and a few of his other offensive Pokemon as well. Now I am expecting him to bring Mega Gallade, Skarmory, Aromatisse, Arcanine, and either Heliolisk or Norvern, and either Crawdon or Metagross. I don't think he'll bring a combination of both of these because then that really leaves him weak to Weavile and my more speedy options. I don't think he'll bring both of these because then he won't have a good way of um, stopping uh, either Primeape or Cartromp there. So I think we'll see a good mix and I'm looking forward to a fantastic battle. So stay tuned to the battle, and um, we're ready. All right, so thanks so much for watching my team builder for this video. For this match, uh, Jack actually ended up bringing exactly what I thought he was going to bring, almost to a T. And before I go any further, thank you very much, Kelly, for the nice, crispy, high quality use in this video. Uh, but with Jack's team, the plan is going to remain the same. Volt switch around with Magneton and pivot out with Primeape a lot to soften things up for Weavile and Blastoise. Uh, I did decide on a more lead based Garchomp with max special attack, enough speed to outspeed Arcanine. I kept that the same with the 204 speed and then the rest in physical attack. And I went with Draco Meteor, Fire Blast, Stealth Rock, and Earthquake. Uh, the reason I went with that is because if he has Ice Punch on Gallade or if his Crawdon sets up, I'm not going to be able to take those hits anyway, and because of Arcanine and Skarmory, and to a lesser extent Metagross, who can all take physical hits a little bit better, going more specially offensive allows me to take those uh, Pokemon out. Um, and of course, if Aromatisse comes in, I can't really threaten it with Garchomp unless I carry coverage anyway, and I didn't want to waste a slot on that. I did want to bring Stealth Rocks to this battle though, because that forces him into that Defog option where we might get a Defiant boost on uh, Primeape or at least force him to waste a turn defogging, which makes it easier for me to trap his Skarmory with Magneton. Uh, I did need to scout to see coverage options on things like Arcanine and Gallade, to a lesser extent Aromatisse, because if he has Hidden Power Ground on Aromatisse or Hidden Power Ice on uh, Arcanine or Ice Punch on Gallade, these are all things that are gonna be important because I can switch in and out of those, but I need to kind of scout for them at the same time. Uh, it was very, very nice to not see Noivern on his side. I definitely thought he was going to bring it. And now that I don't see Noivern, I just have to find out if his Heliolisk is scarfed or not. 
So uh, if his Heliolus isn't Scarf, it dies to Prime Ape. If his Arcanine isn't Scarf, it also dies to Prime Ape. If the Crawdon doesn't have Aqua Jet, that dies to Prime Ape. I can 2-hit KO the Aromatisse. I can also 2-hit KO the Gallade with Gunshot too. So we have a nice game plan going in here. I was at 3 a.m. when we finally had a chance to battle there. We were, there was a little confusion on the time zones. So I was dead tired and he was just waking up. Uh, but we do see the lead Arcanine. I'm just going to go right for Stealth Rock because I need that extra chip damage and pressure. And I could have gone for Earthquake, but I was worried of Skarmory switching in. He misses his turn one Will-O-Wisp, which gives me a free Earthquake on him. This mattered more in the sense of his mentality for the battle more than anything, because I would have still 2 hit KO'd him with Earthquake even if he had burned me. Uh, but since he missed it, that kind of forces him to play a little bit on um, the back foot here because now he kind of is going to switch around a lot to try to pivot into my Garchomp and with my special attack investment I knew I could go for Fire Blast and KO the Arcanine and if he happened to switch into Skarmory I could hit that really really hard. He does switch into Skarmory which is fantastic because he takes that immense damage and now he has to switch out again uh, or lose a Skarmory immediately which I am completely okay with that. Now, if he had burned me in the first place, he might have been able to uh, play around with that a little bit more, because then he would have been at considerably higher HP, right around 45% uh, HP. But now that he's at that level, he can't switch his Arcanine in, and so he just switches it in to die. I take a little bit more burn recoil um, damage here, but having my rocks up and the Skarmory around 30%, fantastic position to be in. Now he brings out Gallade, and really, uh, I, I definitely thought that that was a misplay there, because I'm going to outspeed him and drop a Draco Meteor directly on him, and even if he has Shadow Sneak, that won't KO me without it being boosted. So uh, we get a lot of free damage onto Gallade here, which is nice, because now Primate can KO it from that range. Um, Life War, Max Special Attack, Draco Meteor, I just don't think he saw that coming either, because uh, Swords Dance Garchon does a lot of work to his team. But Garchomp, in just basically three or four turns, has have done has done a lot for our team. He's opened up a lot of walls here. He's also taken down the Galay to a critical level of HP, and that allows me to bring in Fisticles, which basically is a huge red flag that it scarfed. But I'm trying to force him to reveal whether or not his Heliolus is scarfed, because I know if he brings it in on my Primeape, that means that he's probably scarfed. But right here, I figured he would switch out, so we're going to go for U-Turn. He switches delightfully out to the Skarmory. I have seen the leftovers on it, so I know it can't switch out. We go out to Orsted the Magneton, and we trap him right in here. Uh, I have plenty of speed, so I'm not worried about him outspeeding me. And we can just go for Volt Switch. So now that dismantles that physical wall that allows Weavile a lot more breathing room now that Skarmory and Arcanine are down. And I just get to go back out into Primeape. Uh, I could have gone out into Mega Blast or to Blastoise and Mega Evolved, but I didn't want to bait in the Heliolisk. And here he goes out into Aromatisse, which is fine by me because I can just kind of, I can basically stay in here and do whatever I want. I do go straight for a U-turn though because I need to see if he's going to go for an offensive move, set up a trick room maybe, anything weird like that I wanted to check out first. Uh, so I go for U-turn, go back out into Magneton because I can threaten him unless he has hidden power ground. And he just goes for a wish. Uh, and here is like, okay, well, he, he's probably not going to try to send in the Glade because there's no way Glade can live a hit. So what else can come in, take a hit, then get healed up? That's Heliolisk. And I could have gone for Hidden Power Ground here, but I found it much better to go for the Volt Switch because not only would I get some switching priority, but I could force him into a position where if he's scarfed, he has to lock himself into a move, which could open up some entry points for me. Or if he's not Scarfed, he has to switch out, because Primeape is going to outspeed and KO him if he's not Scarfed. Uh, I was also briefly worried that he was focused Sash, because he was trying to get back up to full HP. But he's not Scarfed, and he just goes down immediately. Uh, so I was very, very pleased with that situation. Primeape netting me a KO like this in week two. Very, very happy with the situation. Um, I am locked into my close combat, but I am also an adamant Primeape. And I just kind of wanted to test the waters here. I actually thought he would wish again, but he doubles out into his Gallade, which actually lives the stealth box switch in because of the fighting type resistance. But I just stayed in and went close combat again, picking up another KO. Uh, and really that was 
that was an assist by Garchomp right there, putting Gallade at such a low HP that it couldn't take even a resisted hit. Now on this turn right here, he goes out into Crawdon. I was sure he was going to click Aqua Jet, but at the same time, it's like I can't allow him to set up if he's trying to do that. And he did try to set up on the off chance that I switched out. And because I denied him that setup opportunity, I am able to take Crawdon out immediately as well. So that's three KOs for Primeape. Really all basically off of, uh, I would say they, they, they were all based on that will o -Wisp miss. Granted, since he didn't have Scarf Heliolus, he didn't really have much for a Primeape anyway. Um, so I don't know how much that mattered in the long run, but I will say it definitely affected, uh, at, at the very least, the differential in the way the match played out. Now right here, his last remaining Pokemon is the Aromatisse. I definitely thought he had Hidden Power Ground and he was going to either use that or protect on this turn. And so I went for Magnet Rise thinking he would protect and just to show him, of course, that I have it because who doesn't like showing off their moves? Captain Falcon. Captain Falcon is the answer to that question. He does not like showing off his moves. That's why he's so self-conscious about it. Anyways, though, that was a needless thing to do because he was just going to go for Moonblast. Flash Cannon is an easy to hit KO here. He's definitely max HP, though, because I am a modest Magneton with max special attack. So if he were anything less, that would have one hit KO'd him. Um, and yeah, that's actually going to be the battle after Magneton unleashes one more Flash Cannon. So that's going to mean that the Eterna City Enders get a 5-0 victory against the Norwich Skitty in Week 2 of the Pokemon Premier League. And I am pretty pleased with this. Uh, our opponent in Week 2 here is definitely someone that I have a lot of respect for and I always have to prep really, really heavily for. Granted, um, I feel like I prep really heavily for everyone. But there are just some people where it's like, okay, I have to expect the unexpected as much as I can here and things like that. And in this battle, we didn't really get to see a display of that because of the way things went on tilt, I think, after the will o -Wisp miss. And also just the, the hurriness in which we kind of had to have the battle because we were both behind and this battle's going to Blade, of course. But at the end of that, I still enjoyed the battle. So thank you very much. Uh, to the Norwich Skitty for battling me there, and we finally are on the victory board there as far as battles go in the Pokemon Premier League. And for week three, we'll be going up against Sceptile um, MC or George, who is the coach of the San Francisco Arcaniners. So that's going to be a doozy, of course. We that's just such a different type of battle to prepare for. Uh, so yeah, once again, we'll have our work cut out for us. You think as much as people are cutting out our work for as we could just pick it up and put the pieces together, but no, it's not that easy. But thank you guys so much for watching. I'll talk to you later, and have a great day. Bye-bye now.